Hi there, it's John from It's More Than Just Gaming.com and welcome to another one of my unboxing videos. Today I'm going to be looking at the Star Wars Armada Imperial Light Carrier, although if you want to get technical about it, I think it's the Quasar Fire Light Carrier or something like this. Um, it's described as acting as a mobile starfighter base over Orpkiwag worlds. The Imperial Light Carrier is an ideal garrison vessel that efficiently supports operations in the most primitive conditions. Each light carrier bristles with laser turrets to defend itself whilst its fighter craft are away on crucial missions. These ships can pacify even the most defiant populations when they unleash their terrifying TIE bomber raids. Which all sounds quite cool. Although it's a little bit odd for me because as a, st a fan of Star Wars going back many decades, um, these were actually, in my mind, always uh, rebel ships. Um, first appearing in the Truce of Bakura back in the 90s, which was a novel, I can't remember the name of the author. Um, I shall just give you another look at it. I'll actually take it out of the box. I was just taking out the cards and stuff there and making sure they didn't fall off screen. Um, yeah, the, this was the first. This first appeared in the Truce of Bakura, which happened immediately after Return of the Jedi, when the Rebel fleet that had just finished kicking the living daylights out of the Empire at Death Star Two over the Forest Moon of Endor. Um, they got a distress call from Bakura, a remote uh, or a nearby Imperial outpost that was under attack. Um, and given that all the Imperial ships in the area had just actually fled um, and were incredibly demoralised because of the loss of the Emperor, um, the Rebel Alliance decided to go and try and help out in an effort to be the good guys, but also to try and win over an Imperial star system. Uh, one of these ships was Luke Skywalker's flagship. I think it was called the, the Flurry. Um, it also made an appearance in a video game of the 90s called Star Wars Supremacy, which is now available on Steam as Star Wars Rebellion. It's uh, quite a fun little strategy game where your objective is to conquer the galaxy. Um, I think these are rather odd looking ships, but actually when I feel it in my when I hold it in my hands it's actually fairly sturdy. You've got uh, despite the fact that it looks like it's got a very thin um, core, it's actually quite there there is a, a fair bit of well, it's fairly solid uh, all across the sort of like the, the triangular bit. Um, you've got your main bridge here and you've got your fighter bays at the front. Um, it is a little bit odd, um, but it's also kind of cool as well. I should say that this is also going to be the first video I'm recording with two cameras. Um, I got myself um, a GoPro the other day and I've got it set up to record the cards that you get with... Um, things like this uh, so that you'll get a clearer view of them so hopefully that's going to go really really well i'll assemble the model uh, off camera and pop up an image of it at the end of the video uh, so you can see it in its all of its glory so let's see what's in the the, the fantasy flight bag with all of the cards and things like that so you've got the sort of like the standard uh, brochure that you get with all Armada vessels. Let's see. And it has just a list of all the components and it has a couple of special rules that, co that come with this expansion. Size, restric size restricted upgrades. So a ship cannot upgrade and equ cannot equip an upgrade card if that ship is not of the size classified by the upgrade card size restriction and multiple icon upgrades so there are probably a couple of upgrades within this pack that can be used as either crew or guns or something like that let's have a look at the card Ugh. so yeah these were original these are rebel ships uh, from my past, they've, so, but they've made it into um, Star Wars Armada as Imperial ships because of Star Wars Rebels. Uh, they were an Imperial carrier and Rebels that um, Phoenix Squadron stole. Uh, let's see if you can get a good view of that. That is reasonably good forward fire arc. Um, reasonable shields. Um, okay. Not brilliant weapons, but not terrible either. That's the Quasar Fire 1 class cruiser carrier. 
on the other side it's the Quasar Fire 2 class cruiser carrier um, so it's got more heavy, uh, better weapons at closer range basically which is quite cool and again six hull is not bad um, I think a Star Destroyer is not much more than that um, you've got your standard defense tokens and other tokens that I've never found a use for in the game um, and you've got all your standard dials and whatnot as well none of which you really really need to see because it's not that interesting if you because they're the same in every pack so let's have a look at some of the cards So we've got the Quasar Fire 1 uh, cruiser carrier, uh, two command points, which means it has two dials, which means it's a little bit easier to manoeuvre than a Star Destroyer. It has four squadron points, which is the same as a Star Destroyer, which means it is very good. If you give it squadron orders, it will be able to uh, activate four fighter squadrons or four bomber squadrons at the same time, uh, which means that um, you'd be able to move your carrier into along with, say, four TIE Bomber squadrons or something like that, and blow the living daylights out of a Rebel capital ship. It has two engineering points as well. It is reasonably manoeuvrable, not especially fast. Uh, it's got four upgrades. That's um, an officer upgrade, a, a crew upgrade, and two weapons upgrades. Let's have a look at its heavier counterpart, the Quasar Fire 2 class cruiser carrier. So that has the same command squadron and engineering. Um, the only real upgrade there is that it has slightly heavier weapons and it can have more crew as opposed to weapons upgrades. So um, probably you'd have like fighter control teams and whatnot um, that makes it a more effective carrier. I can actually see this working really well in conjunction with Lambda shuttles, which I already have. They were in the Fighter Squadrons 2 pack. Uh, Lambda shuttles basically increase the range of your fighter control vehicle. So uh, something with Squadron 4 normally can, can activate four squadrons within range of it. But if you've got Lambda shuttles, which are the, the sort of like the, the weird shuttles in Star Wars from Star Wars Return um, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, um, I remember them most from Return of the Jedi when Vader and the Emperor show up on Death Star 2. They are the shuttles that have three wings pointing out to the points of a, an equilateral triangle where the bottom two wings can fold up. Uh, they act as very good fighter relay platforms in this game. So you activate your crew, Quasar Fire, uh, give it squadron orders, and actually I think it's up to two of your squadrons actually can be closer to the Lambda shuttle than they can be to the carrier, which means you could be sneaking them down the side and the Rebel player doesn't expect it. Which sounds like fun to me. I'm really looking forward to getting TIE Bombers to do that sort of stuff with. Unfortunately, the TIE Bombers are part of Imperial Fighter Squadrons 1 and they went out of print or out of production before I started collecting this game. So... Uh, Let's have a look. There's an Admiral in here. Admiral Sloan. While a friendly squadron without rogue is attacking, it may spend one die with um, a focus icon to choose and spend one of the defender's defense tokens. While attacking a ship, it may reroll one die with, uh, I think that's a crit icon. Okay. I'm not sure if I've actually seen Admiral Sloan in Rebels, and I certainly can't remember her being mentioned in any of the books or films, uh, but that's fine because she's possibly in Rebels and I've just not noticed uh, because there are a lot of Imperial Admirals that crop up now and again. Um, so she's very good at organising your fighter squadrons. So something with the rogue trait means it can operate independently, almost like a capital ship. Um, most fighters can't. Um, so she basically boosts those fighters, and that means that um, you can use your fighters to strafe a capital ship and force them to use their defense tokens in preparation for bombers following up or your Star Destroyer blasting the living daylights out of it with turbo lasers. So that's quite cool. Um, Rerolling a crit. Poss Actually, I might want to do that to try and get the focus if... Um, 
the ship that I'm targeting has a lot of defense tokens and it's just going to disperse the damage anyway. So I might as well just expend, reroll, hope for the focus token and get rid of one of the defense tokens. Um, and you can choose what defense token to get rid of, so that's handy. So let's see what we've got next. Actually, I'll leave her there for you for the moment. The Grand Inquisitor. Um, he was season one of Rebels. Um, he was the guy hunting the Jedi in it. When an enemy ship at distance one to five changes its speed, you may exhaust this card by uh, this card to increase or decrease your speed by one. Okay. I can see how that would be useful. It's sort of like keeping keeping things in range. Uh, so as if they're trying to escape the Inquisitor, um, he is a hunter by nature. Um, I can see that he would then want to actually increase speed to follow. Or if they slow down, hoping that you'll overshoot them uh, so that you can't actually bring your main firing arcs to bear uh, or both of your firing arcs, because in Star Wars Armada, so long as you've got, uh, you can fire two firing arcs, each ship has four. Forward and broadsides are usually the best, uh, as you might expect. Um, and if you can bring two of them to bear on one quadrant on an enemy ship, you can pound the living daylights out of it. But um, decreasing your speed might force an enemy capital ship to overshoot you and have to rely on its rear for firing arc. So that's actually quite handy. Um, I don't know that I would use him over another captain. Um, I'd have to actually see what the mission was and what sort of rebel force was likely to be up against me. Um, so let's have a wee look. Um, da -da 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 -da. I dropped these cards er a second well earlier, so they got a little bit muddled, but we're okay. There are two crew slash weapon upgrades. They are identical. I'm going to pop one down in front of the GoPro and see what happens. Boarding troopers. When you reveal a command, you may discard a squadron order's dial or token in this card to choose one enemy ship at close range. Uh, choose and spend a number of its defense tokens up to your squadron value. So, okay, so that would be quite handy in the case of... Um, the idea is that your squadrons, this t your squadron orders are basically being used for boarding shuttles rather than uh, fighter uh, runs. So it's a case of, oh look, I put these on an Imperial Star Destroyer or on a carrier. Um, I'm close to the Rebel command ship. Um, I'm going to expend the squadron orders token that I saved from the first turn um, and board them. Interestingly, um, it says you may discard a uh, squadron order's dial or token and this card. So if you actually, when you reveal the command, if you had the token which you generate on a previous turn, you can still theoretically use your command. It's not being used as an action, so that's very powerful. So you could send your boarding troops over to sort of like knock out... Uh, defences on the enemy frigate or the enemy capital ship and then bomb them with your torp uh, your TIE bombers or TIE defenders or blow them to bits with your turbo lasers. So that's pretty cool. Okay, there are two disposable capacitors uh, that you can use, uh, which is a weapons upgrade. Pop one down here. Okay, cool. Smaller medium ships only. So this wouldn't work on a Star Destroyer. Um, it would work on the, excuse me, it would work on the cruiser carrier. It would work on things like the Imperial Raider, the assault carriers. Um, it, I think it would work on a Gladiator Star Destroyer. Um, it might work on an interdictor. I can't remember if the interdictor counts as a medium or a large ship. I think the Gladiator Star Destroyer counts as a medium ship. I can't remember. When you activate, you may discard this card. If you do, the blue dice in your battery armor can be used while attacking ships at close to long range until the end of the round. Ah, right, okay. Um, 
normally blue dice are only medium range weapons so the red dice uh, are longer range so that's what the strength of the quasar fire 2 is it's got red dice which means it can do longer range damage but with the disposable capacitors you can turn all of your blues effectively into long range weapons i think the red dice are better as well um it's a three point discard um useful perhaps as a one-shot thing well, obviously it's a one-shot thing. Um, not sure I'd use it in fa over something else. Quad battery turrets modification. Um, this is a turret upgrade. While attacking a ship with higher speed than yours, you may add one blue die to your attack pool. Okay, I think that's quite handy because uh, rebel ships, I think, are fair are, are faster by comparison to Imperial ships off the top of my head, um, whereas Imperials tend to favour massive broadsides, slowing down and hammering the living daylights, there's a very good chance that the Rebel player is going to want to just zip past you, um, pour some fire into one shield area and try and get behind you, so they'll be relying on feed, uh, speed, I should say. Um, and this is a any time you're attacking with a ship with a higher speed than yours, you may add one blue die. So actually, you do that from every every zone that you're attacking from. Uh, so if you can get both zones onto you, this speedy craft, something like a Corellian Corvette, or um, is it Phoenix One is the special one from uh, Rebels, um, that would be quite handy. Okay, cool. There are three names. There is the Pursuant... When you, reel a, a, when you reveal a command other than squadron commands, you may discard this card to resolve a squadron command. Uh, treat this command as if you spent a command dial. Okay. Um, it's a two-point discard, uh, the Pursuant, um, and it allows you to change strategy mid-flow. It's quite handy, but it is a one-shot thing. Um, so if you're not wanting to... if if your cruiser carrier is not uh, a significant point in your strategy uh, and it's it's there to make up points or it's there to fill a role, then maybe that's handy. It's a case of, oh, I thought I was going to, uh, going to be um, speeding up this turn, but actually I need to launch squadrons. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure any... Why I wouldn't use squadron orders on a carrier because I could just I could use them to just get them into range the fighters and bombers into range of rebel ships a lot faster. Um, so I'm not sure I'd use that one particularly often. Next one is the squall, which is a three point name. When you activate, you may choose up to three unengaged friendly squadrons at close to medium range. Those squadrons may move up to distance too. If they do, they cannot move, end their movement engaged. Okay, that's cool. So that gives you the opportunity to move additional fighter squadrons on any given turn. So if you're on squadron orders, you're going to bring up, uh, you're going to be able to use, uh, move uh, four squadrons anyway. Um, but then you can actually get three more. Um, but they can't end the turn engaged, which is basically in close proximity to enemy fighters. Um, because basically squadrons then start um, duking it out into sort of like a, a fist fight in space. Um, but that's quite cool, that's quite handy. I can see me using that from time to time. And then there is the five point title or name. I hate the, the fact that they're called titles. Uh, Stronghold. While a friendly squadron with swarm at distance one to two is defending, the attack is treated as obstructed. Okay, TIE fighters have swarm. As you would expect, you get lots of TIE fighters in this game. They are incredibly cheap, and they are the mainstay of the Imperial uh, the Imperial fighter uh, fleet. Um, they basically it basically means when your swarming uh, fighters get bonuses to attack when they are working together, which is how Tie fighters work in Star Wars. They basically swarm Rebel X wings, um, treating the any attack on them as obstructed means they've got a lot more survivability because. Frankly, they are flimsy as hell, which is also uh, true to the lore. Uh, TIE fighters were mass-produced, um, 
in the the old lore, which I think uh, for the original three films, which still holds true, I think, um, they didn't have hyperdrives, uh, unlike rebel ships. They didn't have shields, unlike rebel ships. They didn't even have life support, unlike rebel ships. Rebel ships were commando style ships you could basically deploy a fighter squadron and it could go off to another star system and execute a mission all on its own whereas tie fighters needed to be brought in by carrier um the empire basically always thought it it, it kept the production costs of ties cheap so that it could fill the sky with them problem with that is whilst the ties were cheaper you are having to retrain pilots more and more frequently. Um, it wasn't protecting their the real assets in their fighter force, which would be the fighter pilots. Um, Imperial uh, commanders like Grand Admiral Thrawn, certainly in the Thrawn books, um, from Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and oh, what was the third one? The Last Command. Um, his ethos... Or, or ethos? Yeah, ethos. His... Um, philosophy on Thai fighter combat was that actually um, the pilot's lives were actually considerably more valuable than the Empire placed on them. So he had his, at the very least, his Thai interceptors equipped with shields so that the fighter pilots had a better chance of survival so that they could get, learn from their mistakes, become better and serve the Empire better. Okay. So that's all the cards. I particularly like the boarding party. I think that's awesome. And Stronghold is by far my favourite of the names of the ship. Um, it is kind of weird looking. I, I, I've always thought that, but I can definitely see me fielding it alongside, say, um, a Star Destroyer acting as a capital ship and maybe one of these and then making up the rest of my force with fighters and maybe a couple of Lambda shuttles to act as relays um, and then see where it goes from there. Okay, so that's been my unboxing of the Quasar Fire class cruiser carrier, the Imperial Light Carrier um, from Fantasy Flight Games for Star Wars Armada. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, please, by all means, uh, click like. I appreciate every like. If you want to comment, please feel free to do so. Um, I try to answer any comments that aren't spam. Um, if it's clearly spam, I will ignore you. Um, you will find a full write-up of, or a, a first impressions write-up of this uh, ship on my blog at www.itsmorethanjustgaming.com. The link is in the description. Um, However uh, you want to follow this up, if you want to follow this up, I really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you again in the future. Bye for now.